Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and I am going to finally close out this issue. I went through all of the XML comments and adding them and and it actually, as laborious as it was, it, it did help a couple things because it, it exposed some things that I didn't think of before and it was kind of interesting. So I want to go through those things first and then I found two other things that I want to take care of. Hopefully they're quick. And that should cause close out 701 because I'm going to move all the other issues from 701 into 710, whatever that becomes. Um, those bugs, I'm just not going to bother fixing right now. So the update package settings. Some things I found out by doing all these XML comments. Um, one thing I found out is there were some types that weren't even being used anywhere, so I could remove them. But then there were some that were truly internal. They didn't need to be public in and of themselves. And if they're public, then the analyzers or whatever the case may be will say, hey, you don't have XML comments on this and you should. So, and, you know, arguably maybe you should have stuff even on internals. But the point is, I did make some of this stuff internal. But what happened was in the test project, that is an internals visible to. And what happened in that case is I had some test cases, that's what this first point is here, that were using these types. But because they were internal and those tests were public, I was getting an error. Now you can do this. You can actually make your test class internal but keep the methods public. And those tests will still run if you have NUnit. Okay, so that, that's the first thing I learned. So lesson learned, that's one of the things that you can do if you run into that case. For some reason, this attribute I was trying to put into a C element, S-E-E, -E. so C, C ref or whatever that is. And I was giving the type name and it was giving me some really odd, weird error. I just could not figure out how to get around it. It looked like I had the type name there. It didn't look like anything was being overloaded or anything like that. It's not a generic attribute. I'm like, I don't know what this is. So I finally just put it in a, in a C element and the letter C. And then it worked in that it's not linking to this attribute, but at least it tells you what the attribute is in this case. So that was an odd one. I didn't really know how to fix it, but I got around it. Some exceptions, in fact, all exceptions now, it doesn't seem like the analyzers are kicking in or I've turned that off. Actually, I should look at that. I think I'm, I'm not sure which one I did now that I think about it. So let's open this up in a text editor. So we have events, literals, generic lists, that, that, that. Okay, so those aren't there. It seemed, like, it seemed like I thought there were analyzers in the past that said like exceptions should have all these different constructors, should it be serializable, should be this, that, and the other. And actually, are they still serializable? Yeah, they still are. Okay, so maybe that's still there, but there, here's by the way, the, the case I just mentioned, okay. But you don't have to have all these other you know, these, these other constructors on it anymore. So I was like, okay, well, if you don't need those, take them off. So I took those off. The last one, I'm not going to change right now, but I'm going to be much more aware of this in the future, especially when I go through the whole rewrite version three, is to make it very explicit to say, I am using this type in generated code, is to start using name of wherever possible and name of that thing. Okay, because I want to be able to say, if I remove this, that's gonna break the code here or that I can do a final references and it will show up in the name of. And then I know, oh yeah, that is going into generated code. I can't make that internal. I can't, you know, I gotta leave that public. Okay. Let's also, re no, not that, go away. Yeah, I don't know what I just did, but I did a keystroke that I shouldn't have. Yeah, I don't wanna save this. Okay, I thought I did a control S and that's not what I meant. What I wanna do here is look at down here, the shared. Yeah, I do not have, and that's good. I do not have 
rocks integration tests because I didn't want integration tests to have any special visibility into types that I have in rocks. So that's actually good. I just wanted to double check that again. Okay, good. So I've already updated the change log with this. So give me a moment. I'm going to do the merge and everything and commit. And then we're going to move on to a couple of other issues. So I'll be right back. Okay, got that all merged in, close out the issue. So we're going to go to this next one. And this is more just a naming thing. But I did want to put this in here. And this actually shows the name of thing coming into play. Because if I change the name of here, it is not going to change it in this code here. Okay, so th this is just one of those interesting things of now that I look at this, I'm not entirely sure I want to change this right now. Okay, because I don't have a good way of, well, I could just sneak in the name there. I know it's going to be rocks exceptions, mock exception. But what that type is here and what the name comes in and the full name and if there's generics, that's a whole different thing, okay? Like I should really do that for this as well, but there's the name coming in here. And so do I just say the name of the type and then the name of the method and you know that type of thing. And then if this is generic, I do not want the generic there. You know, There's a lot to think about in terms of how to do that. And I probably want to generalize it. But the point is this mock exception is saying, it's the name is kind of ambiguous and kind of bleh. it just doesn't like what actually is this and so the change i'm about to do is just calling it no return value exception because if you look at text here is no return value could be obtained for that blah 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 but just make the name other than just mock exception you know i that just i saw this when i was changing stuff and i'm like ah let's let's do something different here so let's make a new branch and this is going to be called what? What's 223? 223 exception type name change. I, whatever. That's good enough. Okay. So here we're going to change it so that it is actually the new name we want, which is this. Okay. So we're going to say, nope, I'm going to say this. And there we go. And now we need to go anywhere where there was mock exception. Okay, EFI, mock exception and current project. These are the only two places. So we want this to be that and that. Okay, and then EFI, mock exception, look an entire solution. Do we have it anywhere? We do have it in the test generators. Okay, so that's actually going to change too. So that, let's come back here. That, and this, no matter what, we'd have to manually change because this is looking for, does it match that? Okay, we got that. Let's close these, do that. Let's go to the change log. Cool, pick that up. So what we're going to want to say here too is change the name of the exception mock exception to <laughs> not that to that and this is issue 223 so we'll change that here you know this is this organization stuff gets a little annoying but it's also very beneficial because it's really what you should do so now, you could arguably say that this is a breaking change and we should do an 8 because we are changing the name of the type. But, man, <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just sitting here going, I, I don't want to do an 8 for this. You know, I, I guess really it's, it's a breaking change. I'm changing the name of a type. I should really do the right thing and, and say, yes, it's an 8.0, but over one type name change. Uh no, because this really, this is a, a condition that's basically saying something went wrong. If you're trying to catch for the specific one and something bad happened, like you didn't have return type, well, this is actually better. So I'm just kind of like, no, this was, this was a bug. It really should have been called this. So we're just going to go with that. Okay. All right. So 
We've got that in place. Let's make sure the name of the file is correct. Yeah, that should be, no, not that. Should be that. Yeah. So we have that new markets, uh, expectation, expectation, so return, verification, exception, no return value, except I want to just make sure one thing that's does not return. That's expectation. That's new mock instance, because one of these got named wrong, like the names of the files and the types that were in them were wrong. I just wanted to make sure that that was good. OK, so I'm going to pause again, shut down, start up and run all the tests and see what happens. All right, that worked. So let's close out this issue. I've already done the merge. So we are good there. One thing before we do one last thing in this episode is I was noticing when I was running my builds and tests that I always get this like unexpected exception or unhandled exception or something down below. It still would cause, it would still make the build succeed. It would still let me write, run all my tests. But for some reason, having end unit in this code generation test project, which I was only using as a reference to say, hey, can I mock anything in end unit? And if I can, is it causing any problems? That's the whole point of this project. It's not a test project. It is a console app that I run. But for some reason, I think in Visual Studio, it's like, oh, do you have one of these test assemblies? And if you do, well, then you probably want tests. And so I would see like errors about test host not being there. So I thought I'd try to fool it and put the test SDK there and something else, like the actual end unit test runner or whatever. Nothing helped. It just, you get different issues, but you know, again, nothing that would stop me, but I'd always see that little un you know, unhandled and unexpected error exception thing down below. And I just went, you know what? Let's just remove end units. So code generation test no longer looks at the end unit types. There was about 300 in there that were mockable, but none of them gave an error. So I'm like, oh, okay, we lost them. But, you know, this, again, it was just one of those little annoyances that was getting to me. So, and then, yeah, we got like, errors but of course it the test all passed I'm not I'm ignoring that yeah I have no idea why this C sharp upgrade MS build workspace analyzer is kicking in this one's interesting this is something from another I think it's compute sharp and I got to send them a, a thing because for whatever reason this is coming back and saying there's an error here and I I have no idea why so and this one I don't know. I don't know why you're throwing errors. Not my problem. So whatever. Okay. So let's go to the last thing. And that is, if I go to my milestones, 701. And that is this one, which is a rock repository. Okay. So if I come in here and I say rock repository, it's a simple class. Okay where we basically say, hey, let's do a create, okay? But then there's also a dispose because we implement I disposable. Well, what happens if you call dispose? Like we can create instance of it, we can make mocks, call dispose, which will verify it, and then either call create again or dispose again, which would try to verify, um, you know, it, it really wouldn't cause too many issues. I don't think verify like flips any states to say, if you've been verified once, don't verify again. Which now that I'm thinking about it, that probably is what you should do. You know, verify is the end. Once you verified, then you should move on. Arguably, when I'm thinking about this, you know, should expectations have dispose on it? Because you're saying that a, a X set of expectations has a scope. And if you don't leave without calling verify, then you're, you're kind of missing the point. These should be verifiable. That's going a little bit farther than what I expected to think about here. So... <laughs> The thought here was, well, okay, going back to my notes when I was looking at this, so try to verify again. When you when you do disposable, you're really supposed to make sure that you don't allow members on your type to be called again because disposable means basically the object is done its 
whatever it needs to do and dispose, and that's it. You're done. You can't really do anything with that anymore. You shouldn't do anything with it anymore. In fact, you should throw object dispose exception. Okay. But most people don't do that with iDisposable. This gets back to kind of a rant I've had about if .NET could do all the things different is to somehow say that, you know, if the, people don't remember the whole discussion around disposable way back on the development or discuss lists. Um, this was the thing that got, you know, um, the whole like, how do you clean up your resources, especially if they're unmanaged and I'll do this whole discussion and this is what they landed on, I disposable. 20 odd years later, what I really wish we had is something to say, I have something that's scopable. So within a scope, kind of like what you have with a using statement right now, where you can just say using and you don't have to put the, the, the block there, is just to say at the end of the scope that it's in, call, you know, scoped or whatever the method would be on it, I don't know. Scopable, scoped. Yeah, this is why you don't ask me to name things. But that's really what I'm what you sometimes do with disposables because it has this kind of friendly little hack that you can do in C sharp to put a using on something and it will call dispose and it basically says, I'm at the end of how I'm supposed to be used, now do that. It really has nothing to do with resource management per se. And that's not how you're supposed to use it, but people hijack it to do that, kind of like what I'm doing here. Again, in retrospect, I really wish that this disposable is like a specific case of having an object that has a specific scope. And of course you can set a reference to that object and pass that somewhere else. And then when it gets out of that scope, it will try to call end scope on it or something like that, but it's already off somewhere else. And what happens when, you know, it's still used after that. So, you know, there's a lot of issues here that I'm kind of glossing over. The point is, though, here, I don't think it really causes any problems other than you could call dispose on it directly and then call create on it more times. And that's really not what you want to do. You want to basically say for a repository, once you're done, that's it. The other thought, though, that I've now had, and that's not a bug, it's just you know, this would be a different design. Um, and calling this a bug, too, is a little bit of a stretch but is that you can only call verify once on a set of expectations. Once you've done that, you can't verify again. It's a one and done. And to, to me, that makes sense because that, I think that enforces even more the, the notion of what an expectations object is. It's a way for you to set expectations. You can make a mock from it. And we already tracked that you only create a mock from it once. We should also track that you can also you can only do verify once. So I'm going to make a note of that. I'm going to put that in as a future issue to say consider making either expectations of T disposable or ensuring that verify is only called once. Okay, um, and I and kind of what I'm thinking is okay, we did all this. This is what I, I know it's kind of a pain, but this is what I love about software and design and solving problems is always trying to think more about what you're doing and did you do it right and could you do it better and that continual improvement. I saw a video, a really small video quick about, I think it was interviewing somebody who was in the Navy or the Marines, I'm not sure, some branch of the armed forces and they said, out of anything that you could educate somebody on, what, you know, or what's the best skill that somebody could have? And he said, problem solving. He said, everything you do in life, you know, like everything that you run into life, doesn't matter if you're in the military, doesn't matter if you're a doctor, doesn't matter if you're, you know, what whatever your career is, there's always problem solving that comes into play. Just even being in a family, raising kids, that's solving problems too all the time, behavioral issues that go on between kids and stuff like that. And, you know, having the ability to break problems down, figure out how you need to solve them. And sometimes you don't have a lot of time to do it. And sometimes you do. But 
it, you know, I really agree. That really hit, and I really agree with that. I think that's something that, out of any skill that people can cultivate, it's problem solving, figuring out how to solve problems, and not just like in software development, although that's a lot of what we do, but trying to come up with solutions that are effective and and then also continually refining what those are. So in any event, what I want to do here is, hey, is consider making verify on an expectations of T a one time call. And once it's called, nothing else can be called on the object. So you can't add more expectations. You can't call verify again. So this is very close to disposable, but we've already published an API for this that a lot of people would use. And a lot, <laughs> a lot of people use rocks. You're right. For the people that actually use it. Okay. And so you wouldn't want to break that. And I don't want to suddenly make people have using statements everywhere and whatnot. So it's sort of like a dispose, but not quite. Let's get back to this. Okay. Let's make a branch and say, this is 222. Enforce dispose on repository. Okay. And so let's actually make some tests here. This, where is this? This is in rocks. Okay. Do I have any? No, I don't. I don't. Oh my God. What is the new, by the way, what is the new key keystroke file, file add? I want to do file add new file. I know they added that recently in, yeah, it's not this. I thought it was like shift. Is that it? No, that's just, too... no, that's class view. I don't want class view. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, I know there's some keystroke that can basically say add new file. Quick add new file. What's that? Quick add new files. Add a new file without browsing through the template list. Create nested folders. Show all templates. Show compact view. Oh, was I missing that there's a compact view on it? No, I don't see it here. Huh, huh whatever. I don't know. So, rock rip. Repository tests. Wait, where did it put this? Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> it did not cut that. Put that there. Thank you. Okay, so we want rocks. Dot tests. Make that. Just take your sweet time. You know, we're not on the clock here or anything. Okay. Public static class. We want to say public. No, we want to say test. And we want to say public static void. Create after dispose was invoked. We want to have a test there to do that. And then we also want to say dispose more than once. Okay. So what we want to do is say like var repository. And we, and we want to be clear, we do not want to put it in using because we want to have control over this. Repos repository is equal to new rock repository. Okay. And then we say repository dot create and this is where I just want to have like a public interface I oh you know what I'm putting this probably in the wrong spot I should have this in integration test because we're not testing are we actually no I don't I just lost it didn't I I just lost it. Oh, fine. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know what I did. But, uh -huh. okay. But it should be here. Fine. Test. Public. Static. 
void create after dispose what it's called and then we will say past public static void dispose more than once god i can't that type so what we want here is this this okay we can do that so if we do not want to do that we then want to say mock first i'm just going to copy and paste okay and then we want to say repository dot dispose and that should verify and that should actually verify but now we want to say that assert that doing repository create on i first repository and we're going to say this is an action okay we don't care what the return value is throws type of object disposed exception there all right so that that's the first test which we know will fail you already know that so let's do this and then let's just say that now if we call dispose again that will throw that okay we know those, those will fail so let's come to rock repository let's keep a flag around private wait why is that over weird there I don't know why it doesn't let me format that. Private bool is disposed. And that is false. So here we're going to say if this dot is disposed, throw new or no object disposed exception and object name, object name, message. <sighs> this dot get type name. I don't really care. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing in here, except we also have to remember that once we've done this, this dot is disposed is equal to true. Okay. Because if we come in here and true, okay, so now this should work. Okay. And in fact, everything should work. Nothing should fail anymore. Okay, including those two tests. So pause, shut down, start up again. I just want to make sure it picks up these changes. Let's see if all the tests, including these two new ones that I just put here, also pass as expected. These don't fail. And it's right because we're using it here. That, that, you know, I'm looking at this and starting to go, you know, if we're going to break all the things, maybe we should break expectations too. <laughs> that sounded weird. Break all the expectations and say that using var expectations equals and then on a disp and then you don't even have to call dispose it's like or verify that just forces you to then say i'm going to verify this at some point again that's why i don't want to do it now because it's it's a big ass to change that and there are big changes coming in in store for this thing as i mentioned so shut down start up again and let's see what happens Okay, all tests pass, everything's good. So I'm going to commit this after I do the change log. I'm going to merge it. I'm actually going to do a push of the whole NuGet package. Well, it's getting late tonight, so probably tomorrow morning when I get up, just do a new package and a tag. I'll also put this new issue in about should verify still be around or we do dispose and do the same thing with expectations and really enforce it hard that way. We'll see. That's that's another thing I'm I need to think about that for a while. But at least I'll put an issue in the backlog so I don't forget it. So next episode's coming up, unless I decide to sidetrack for a little bit, is going to be the start of the whole rocks rewrite. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.